Hey guys, uh, I'm Ethan from Stockholm Supply. Um, I got a phone call from Don who owns one of our round rippers and he is having a bit of an issue with it because when he's cutting a bowl blank, a circle, um, something like this, he's not cutting a perfect circle, he's cutting a bit of a spiral. Um, his spiral is going towards the inside. So um, basically I'm going to help show Don how to set up his round ripper or any circle cutter so it cuts a perfect circle. So what I've done here first, I'm gonna make a cut, but I have kind of set this up incorrectly to try to mimic what's going on with Don's round ripper. So let's make a cut here. So I got my stock set up. I'm gonna lock it up, turn the knob up here. Okay, so that did not go well, which is exactly what I hoped for. So let's take this out. I want to show you guys what happened here. Let's wait for this blade to slow down just a little bit. Oh, uh, okay, that's okay. You could have saw that before I took that out, but if you look at that circle I just cut, it actually cut more it cut right down into a spiral. So it should have ended right about here, but it continued about an inch or two beyond the perfect circle. So it cut a spiral that kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So the problem is pretty simple, the alignment. Um, so I'm gonna take this piece of wood right out and I'm gonna show you guys what I can do to fix this. So I get the camera to come nice and close here. So I want you to look at this pin. So I just got this bar up top so it's out of the way. So this pin, this is the pivot point. This is the center of the circle. We need to make sure that that center of that circle is in line, not with the back of the gullet, not with the center of the gullet, but with the tip of the teeth, the very front of the teeth. We're gonna do that with a little square. This is just a speed square I have here. I'm gonna go up against my round ripper base. You know, if you look at that center of my pin, I'm about a quarter of an inch in front of my blade. So this is set up pretty far off. Now on this round ripper, we have a stop right over here. I'm gonna loosen this. It's either a Phillips or a black uh, Robertson. And I'm gonna slide this in so that that pin is in line oops, with the front of those teeth. Okay, so center that pin right about there. Now something you need to be aware of. The thrust bearing on your bandsaw, if you have that thrust bearing set um, far away from the back of your blade, like an eighth of an inch, that will affect where your blade's gonna sit when you put pressure on it. So just be aware of that. Um, okay, so I got that set up pretty good. I'm gonna set my stop up, just lock it back up. Once I have this locked, I'll flip it over so you can see what this looks like. That stop, it's just hitting the edge of my bandsaw table. Um, so you push your round ripper through, it'll stop. Every circle cutter is going to have something similar to that. Alright, okay, so here's my piece of wood. We'll throw this back in my round ripper. And we will make another cut and see how we did. Now this cut isn't going to be um, with a parallel with the last cut I just made because that last cut I just made was not a perfect circle. Uh, but now that we have this aligned, we should be able to cut a whole lot better. So 
Now, the other thing that you got to realize when you do have this set up incorrectly, even you can see that right there, it's very hard on bandsaw blades. It binds them quite a bit. So you got to be careful with it. You're liable to wreck the set really easily. So make sure you have it set up properly. So slide this in. We'll make a little cut off the outside. Okay, I'm going to cut a little bit more. And we'll kind of start where I ended up last time, then we'll be able to see pretty well how we got it. Okay. If you look at that joint I just made, nearly perfect. There could be maybe a tiny bit of adjustment I could do yet, but that's way close enough for a bowl blank. Um, now, the first cut I made, I had my pin set too far this direction of the blade. That means my spiral that I'm going to cut will get smaller and smaller and smaller. If I have this pin set too far on this side of the blade, that means the spiral I'm going to make is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so that's how you can kind of determine which direction you need to set up that pin. So yeah, so we got the setup pretty good now. So we can go ahead and make as many ball blanks, whatever size I want. And there's the other side. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any other questions, uh, let me know. Uh, you can email me at info at stockandsupply.com or comment on this video. And make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.